Kia ora koutou. hello everyone. Welcome to episode 48 of Only a Podcast. Say hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Um, kia ora whanau. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all right, as we've just been saying. Uh, we've had a general election. Mm, yeah. And uh, it's, 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 pff, we're just waiting to see just how right-wing it gets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Depended on your but point of view. Of, but enough of the politics. Yeah, enough um, of that. Which, Let's um, dive in, as it mm. were. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got a fair bit. We've got loads of TV. We got yep. books. We got darts again. I uh, mm. don't know what that is, but that's you. Yep. Uh, and um, yeah, and one or two other bits. We'll see. Mm. Just how far we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, I'll kick off, shall I? Yes. Uh, I'll start with a bit of telly. So. Um, yeah. A couple of my favourite shows from the UK are back on. Um, one that you might describe as a guilty pleasure, but I don't, I don't like the phrase guilty pleasure. If you like it, you like it. Um, yeah, so uh, we kind of got ourselves into a, a kind of TV routine now. We were watching over the weekend, we are watching what was on the BBC the night before, or, or yeah. before, the night before. So Saturday nights we're watching Gogglebox and Have I Got News For You. Oh, okay. And, and then, uh, Fair enough. Yeah, Sunday nights it's Strictly. We, we do love Strictly, guilty pleasure. Then Monday nights it's Strictly The Results Show. That's all, yeah, it's all a bit like that. But it's bigger like than UK, yeah. Yeah it's, yeah, it's great. It's all good. It's all good. Love it. Um, yeah, I watched a few bits and bobs on the telly. Also, I watched a documentary that was on um, a week or, to, week or two ago. I don't think it's new. I think it was it was first put on quite yeah. some time ago. But um, Jay Blades, your man off of the repair shop. Indeed. Um, uh, and the fact that he was illiterate, basically. He couldn't really read or write up until the age of about 50. And there was a yep. little doc- documentary on about his um, journey into learning to read and write, and yeah, tough, tough gig really for him. He was yeah. dis- he didn't know he was dyslexic till he was a well, well and truly an adult, but he, he was dyslexic, and you could see the real struggle just like reading the word dog or something. You know, you don't realise yeah. how hard mm-hmm. it can be. So um, I won't give any spoilers, but it was good. Well, well worth a watch that if you if you're interested. I have that on the list. I think we have mentioned, yeah, the although we're 48 episodes deep at the moment, uh, yeah. um, the memory is t- sad. But, um, yeah, we have mentioned his book before, uh, which I did read. Yeah. And once you once you get the full details um, of just how his life has gone at all mm. sorts of stages, yeah. then you fully understand why he can't or hasn't been yeah, yeah. able to yeah, read. He had a, t- um, a tough, tough gig, but he's... Yeah. he's He's done all right. He's done all right for himself. I just found that. When you see his house right that he's time, got on, on that uh, yeah. on the documentary, you see his house. Like, okay, yeah. yeah, you've done all right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, no, I mean, good, that is good on that, him. talking about UK TV routines, um, the repair shop on a Friday night here, although mm. that isn't the most recent one. Uh, it's because it's the one I've been watching. I don't want to get ahead of myself in case, <laughs> in case I end up watching, you know, getting frustrated by the fact that over here, you yeah. get one on Friday night and I go, oh, no, yeah. I've watched this yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to keep my sequence. I, I, can't, I don't even know what series I'm in, but I'm just going to carry on with the No, I've no idea. But it's great, gosh. isn't it? It's just great. It's just great stuff, the, the repair it's shop. Just, we've talked about it before. It's great. I made um, the dinner on a Friday if we're in. Yeah, I get a beer, a beer out of the fridge, and go yeah. and sit on the sofa and watch repair shop. Yeah, perfect, perfect. That's what it is? I've also watched a couple of the uh, the new Mortimer and White House Gone Fishing series. It's, yeah, we don't need to say anything about that. It is what it is, right? Uh, we great. keep mentioning it, uh, yeah. uh, and it's it's done series six now. Uh, yeah. uh, presumably there'll be some kind of Christmas special, as there mm. has been in the. But I, I did go back. Um, Folks, if you if you go back to some of the early ones, uh, it's a little more edgy between the two. Mm. I think they've sort of relaxed into each other's idiosyncrasies. Um, yeah, and Paul gets much more angry. It yeah. like, really does get angry at yeah. times. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's generally apologise with shame face, but they break the way out of it in, 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 within the show. You know, yeah, they, of they course. Just, so they're not yeah, he gets a bit other, exasperated but, at times, doesn't he? Ah, uh, uh, he certainly yeah. does. But um, <laughs> but but the the more recent, the series five and six ones have been 
much more relaxed and less mm. angst. Mm. Um, I think uh, yeah, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's Bob doesn't press so many buttons anymore. Uh, yeah, maybe. As well. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but, there's, but the, you know, there's another thing that I can just sit and watch and, and rewatch. I've been going through. Yeah, you never tire of it. Two or three, you know. Yeah, uh, it's like yeah. a warm bath. Yes. <laughs> Um, and something else with both well I think you've seen it all I've only seen two episodes is this Jimmy Savile the Reckoning Reckoning documentary I I have seen what do you make of that then I've only seen two Uh, I think it's four is there in total yes yeah Um, I've seen two uh, although I very quickly say it it, just for me slightly it's another one of those four episodes you know where three might have done I think I I don't know it mm. just, especially the, the, in fact, the ones you've seen, I think are the ones that have the most uh, loggers in it or whatever you mm. want. You know, it, it, it just moves a bit too slowly. And I can understand building up the story and that kind of thing. But mm. um, I think you'll find that when you get to three and four, it just moves a bit more effectively. Um, uh, I can guess we say that we've watched it so some people don't have to because it might be one of those things that people don't want to watch. Um, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, that's for sure. In case you point a similar thing, there's a book by Gordon Byrne about Rosemary and Fred West, and I have read it, and it's simultaneously one of the best books I've ever read and one of the worst Yeah, because of the subject. Uh, this yeah. is a bit like that. It doesn't. It didn't break any new ground for me because mm. we kind of knew that mm. most of it by now. I, the, the fact that there's a Netflix documentary on him is... Uh, that tells you everything you need to know in a sort of more matter of fact way, but uh, but Coogan more than pulls it off. Um, yeah. And again, they, I just, it was mooted that kind of like oh, he's going to get loads of awards and you know BAFTAs mm. and all that kind of thing. Uh, but again, there might be some reticence in the judging not to award yeah. awards to that to, kind of that. role where it's yeah. exposing the monstrous guy. Uh, but again, yeah. I, 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 and again, also that I. I and you might, I don't know, I don't know how you feel when you've seen the next two, but um, I felt Coogan as the older Saville was just a cut above the, the earlier ones as well. The, uh, right. I, 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 I'm not really talking about an age thing because I think he got he got the mannerisms and the age mm. and the vitality and all that kind of thing. Mm. And as you, you see him get older, you see him wind into himself. And, yeah, and, yeah. The posture and, and the voice, the voice, even uh, the the voice is just spectacular. Uh, yeah, I just was odd to describe it that way, but it, it just gets older Saville really well. I mean, have you ever seen that right scene? Well. Um, I never really watched it, you know, religiously. But um, the one with, uh, with Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon is it called The Trip? Where they go off and do a road trip yeah. around restaurants I, and I've seen a few of those. Yeah, yeah. and have you ever seen mm. that clip where they're both doing Michael Caine? Having yes. a sort of cane off, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah, but they do him at different stages of his of his life and how Michael Caine's voice has changed. I mean, he's just a brilliant um, mimic, isn't he, Steve Coogan? He's he's so yeah. good. Uh, he used to do a lot of the spitting image voices and that, didn't he? And he's he's so good. Yeah. I, I always struggle to watch him because he's just Alan Partridge to me. And um, whatever I see him in, I just see yes. Alan Partridge. Um, That's right. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, he's yeah he's pretty damn good in this Jimmy Savile thing. But yeah, I don't know if it'll be award-winning or not. And maybe, I, I guess it won't be, actually. I don't think it will. Um, no, apparently the I, book, you know, so it's based around the journalist who's interviewing Jimmy Savile, you know. It is. Um, that's and, part of the story, isn't it? Yeah. That, and that's uh, the, Dan, Dan that's, is in the story. Yeah. And that's the book where it all came out, right? Was that the book that sort of led to the... I think that... That, that sort of that revealed it, a lot. Really. Yeah, yeah, blew it open. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I haven't read the book. I don't know if I want to, but um, yeah, but good. And with the, I, good with that as well, it, with people go, you know, how possibly did he escape? And and the, the TV series does answer a lot of that. Hmm. But the thing it doesn't say, which is totally obvious, is the lack in those days of rolling news feeds 24 hours into your ears and eyes yeah um it was just easier to hide because if you missed a newspaper one day or you didn't read an article and nobody told you about it yeah you didn't hear about it yeah um, for ages so 
it was yeah. easier for him to hide in those days because yeah. the scrutiny wasn't there. Um, and certainly people didn't, you know, obviously people didn't want to go up against him, but. He's the, uh, the archetypal evil genius, right? He, yeah, he knew what he was doing. It must have been, that must have been. Yeah. The, the uh, intent. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So Amazing. I'm, I'm not going to urge anyone to watch it. No. Unless you feel you're ready to watch it. Uh, and it's, you it is see, a great, great piece of television. Yeah, you will see great performances. Yeah. And surrounded by uh, such a touch, I've got to get this one in. We're spending a bit of a long time, but um, uh, the the touches of it, of the not of the sort of normality of, of that kind of attitude. His his assistant was Ray Tourette was was one of those guys. Mm. The and several ends up in Scarborough in a flat. That's that's one of his many homes, mm. and is friends with Peter Giaconelli, who was uh, became the mayor of Scarborough and was a mm. big. Ice cream, yeah, magnate, magnate, ice cream yeah. magnate, yeah. Um, and he was one of those guys too. Mm. And one of the the best touches of all is that you see uh, Saville on top of the pops, Coogan as Saville on top of the pops, and it's the end of Top of the Pops, and it announces the number one, Two Little Boys by Rolf That's Harris. It. Yeah, and you think, yeah, it's another one. There you go. There you go. It's good. Anyway, keep it light. Keep it light. <laughs> um, right, let's move on, folks. <laughs> let's move on. So last week I went out. Oh, know, again? Yeah, Jeez. I went out into Man. the into the world. Got myself away cool. from the house to uh, the the local darts. It's been on the cards for a oh, while. Yeah, I, got, I, got, saying, yeah. I got dragged Brilliant. along to to play dart. My first ever competitive game of darts ever. Um, oh. It wasn't competitive. It was a practice night, but this darts club, so it's the, it's the Otago Darts Association, right? It's a big deal. It's like a community hall. And it's Shout got, out to the Otago Darts yeah. Association. Yeah, you, keep it real, you guys. Um, it's a big hall. I've been in the hall before for a different event, um, mm. and it's a big hall. And it's got 24 dart boards around the walls. It's, it's, it's a darts paradise. And right. my word, what an experience that was. People from <laughs> all walks of life. Excellent. Um, all walks of life, uh, honestly. But there were some professional darts players there. You know, they make their living doing it. Some guys in there, New mm. Zealand. Everyone, almost everyone, was wearing a darts, uh, a darts shirt, shirt. Shirt, you know. <laughs> some maybe could have got a bigger size shirt. I don't know. Um, uh, but everyone's wearing a darts shirt. Some of them were wearing their, their New Zealand dart, international colours. You know, oh, um, there were some serious yeah. players there. Um, yeah. But I've got a couple of games. Um, as I say, they're only practicing. I, lo I lost both of my games. But I did score 140 in one of the games, oh, which, cool. made, which made people look. Um, and I witnessed a 180. When I was, uh, the, never mind playing darts. Doing the scores is a stressful bit because it's yeah. chalkboard. So I haven't got the machines. It's, chalk. it's a, chalk, yeah, it's a yeah. chalkboard. Not even chalk. It's this weird stuff that's not chalk. Uh, maybe I'm out of touch here with chalk oh, technology. Awesome. It's this piece of like I don't know an inch and a half long, and it looks like sort of clear plastic. Looks like a okay, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's your chalk. Don't okay. know how that. Don't know how that works. But it never well, wears it's, out. It's Ma probably magic. A lot of, uh, there's probably a lot of asthmatics or uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah, pretty pleased about that. that. Kind of yeah, stuff. I don't know how it works. It draws on the board exactly like chalk, but it's not chalk. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone knows. Let me know. Um, but yeah, I did witness a, one of the players get a 180 while I was chalking. So um, I have to sign a little right. thing. Well, if they if they hit a 180, they fill in a little slip in a book and the right. scorer has to witness it. I know oh, there's okay. a prize, prize at the end of the season for the most 180s, but yeah. <laughs> I think they're quite rare to come by, it must be. I thought it was fairly common. Anyway. I would so, be sad yeah. if no one was looking. <laughs> yeah. No, really, it was. Oh, no. You, you yeah. walked up and stuck them in. No. Yeah. So uh, I've witnessed some very good darts players and uh, – yeah, it was it was it was good fun. I'm cool. I'm I'm fairly good at it. I think I'm quite good at darts. I could be, but yeah, whether I continue to go or not, I don't know. That was just a one off. No. We'll, see, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, mm. yeah. What you got? Sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot. No, I just talked a lot in several. Um, what have I got? I've got this, which I've got as a present for those people. Not Happy watching. birthday! And I'm holding up a book called Bullet Train by Kotaro Isaka of Japan. Um, and it's also, it's th and I've only read the reviews, not seen the film. Um, it's a film starring Brad Pitt of a sort of act the action genre. Mm. Um, uh, it's not got very good reviews, so I don't know if I'll chase it out, but this book is really cool. It's about five trained 
Japanese killers on the Shikansen bullet train. There it is, bullet train. And they've all got a mission. And some of them have missions to interrupt the missions of other ones. And, and so the, a couple of other ones just happen to be there doing something with another one. And it's all linked up. And they're all, there's a suitcase full of money and uh, much shenanigans going on um, as the bullet train rattles through towards Tokyo. Um, all sorts of things are supposed to happen and the doors lock and you know people can't get off and, and yeah. you know obviously you're on it and you're on it with um with four other trained killers all doing nefarious things and it's it's really good oh um, okay yeah 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 it's, it's a rattling good tale actually i've just had a notification just yesterday from the library a book i ordered is is ready for collection it's the um the graham cox and uh uh, autobiography thing so ah, uh, I'll yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be going to get that tomorrow and I'll dive into cool. that um speaking of books about trains do you remember oh I'm going back early 2000s probably 20 years ago now there was a book it was called something like project 365 or something 365 mm -hmm. and it was this sort of conceptual book it was about a London underground train and there was 365 <laughs> passengers on the train and the book was 365 pages and each book each page was about each passenger and each page was 365 words oh cool. and it was the relationships between all the nice. characters that's just sprung to my mind god I've, i loved yeah. that book at the time i'll see if i can find that somewhere find that out yeah it was called yeah. three it might have just been called 365 i'm not sure anyway if anyone knows let sounds, me know sounds intriguing i have yeah. got so many books to as people may have seen on my own personal socials yeah Although not on X anymore, because I booted that one. Um, yeah, I think we're going to kick that out, aren't we? I, I've got the book X. stack. Yeah, we might not be on Twitter anymore, folks. Not that um, it, it's yeah. Not that we do much anyway. But yeah, go, go we, threads. We or... have, there's a secret, folks. We don't really like doing social media. No, um, oh, it's but, not even you that. Know, we, well, it can is. Can I get that. on with it? It is that. It, we just <laughs> don't really have that much to say. I mean, it is that. I, I don't mind no. doing writing things like like on twitter i don't mind tweeting stuff or even yeah, yeah. a facebook post but when you've got to put content on of some sort it becomes a bit more difficult i find and yeah uh, you know we'll, we're not we're not kids we're yeah. not that generation are we so no nope. uh we'll, we'll do go. instagram I'm gonna, we're gonna do instagram if you're on instagram we're on instagram and yeah we're gonna carry on doing that one because that's yeah to and we're on threads as well so threads if you find you threads do, so if you find you our insta threads. there'll be a link through to our threads as well so Indeed. Yeah, we'll do a bit of threads uh, and Facebook. The three Fs, Facebook, threads, and Instagram. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so, okay, going to give you yeah. another one here. So, okay. when there's a, oh, not a celebrity, a musician, let's say, who you've never really heard him speak, and you hear their speaking voice, and you think, no, they don't sound like that, do they? <laughs> right. So oh, um, that, happened, that happened to me. So uh, yes. it was a it was a podcast, and they were interviewing Will Sargent. Okay, the All guitar right. the guitarist from Echo and the Bunny Men. Okay, yes, never heard him speak. He's a very tacit, taciturn kind of person, right? He's just yeah. long fringe, staring down at the floor, doing his guitar magic. He's a bit of a guitar hero, uh, and obviously, I know they're from Liverpool, and I know what Ian McCulloch talks like. Definitely, and, yeah. And I just thought, uh, you know, Will. Well, I never thought, but what. what you know, I would assume Will Sargent, I see him like a sort of John Cale type character, you know, very, you know, yeah. very quiet and deep voiced and doesn't say much. Well, I heard him being interviewed about his new book. He sounds exactly like Lily Savage or John Lennon. He's got that real kind of nasally scousy twang. And I just didn't imagine, he, <laughs> I just couldn't believe it when I heard it. I was like, you, you don't sound like that, Will Sargent. You just sound like a regular scouser, you know. Um, so yeah, and, uh, th there's others. I was thinking, you know, obviously yeah. people like Adele, you think, oh, how do you speak like that? But, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know, folks, if you think of any other yeah, people and their speaking voices and anything like you thought it might be, let us know. It's a bit, bit esoteric that. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. <laughs> yeah. A bit strange. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I heard on the radio. Today. Oh, no, I'll come back to this. You were going to talk about the Rolling Stones, right? Well, I could talk about that. Yeah, do well, that. I could start that one off, this is, at least, this is because related, I have... This is related to I it, am, sort of. I, because it was out today. Mm. I think it was sort of came out early this morning here. 
So I listened to it today, and uh, it's a Rolling Stones album. What a surprise. Yeah. Uh, it's got Elt, Eltoon, Dame Elton on uh, keyboards and BVs, um, uh, Lady Gaga doing the Mary Clayton bit on some of the slowies, on a slowy, and uh, Sir Paul McCartney uh, doing a bit of fuzz bass on oh. a couple, I think. Really, really fuzz type bass. Nice. Uh, uh, Bill Wyman's in it somewhere, and yep. the recorded Recorded bits of Charlie, they've used all those up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it sounds exactly like a Rolling Stones album, and for Rolling Stones and, and modern production, so it's big mm. and loud. Yeah. Uh, and if that sounds like your kind of thing, then have a go. But um, put some sunglasses on if you're going to look at the cover, as we said last time, because it's awful. But I did learn today on Threads, there is a limited edition cover, I think, which is the, the Paul Smith cover. So whether it's the Paul Smith designer. Hmm. clothing dude hmm. uh, i did look it up i'm sorry hmm. um but the paul smith cover you can google it folks it's much nicer than the strangely ai generated my hmm. nephew's got photoshop version yeah. of uh, <laughs> hackney diamonds yeah i don't, I don't think i'm gonna be uh, buying it but i will definitely listen to it i believe oh. it's um i've what i've heard well i've heard the single was it called angry or something yeah um, it's all right i mean it's all right and um as I heard someone say the other day, if you can make rec music like that 56 years after you first started making music, um, you're doing all right. Um, they're, 18, they're, they're, 18 years after the last one. Yeah, exactly. I and their, um, so, their yeah. first first greatest hits album was 1966. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah high, so, tide, high Tide and Green, High Tide Big Hits and Green Grass. Oh, my dad has oh, that one. Well done. My yeah, dad has that. Got that. Then I, I had the Hot the Rocks one. one. That was my intro to the Rolling Stones as a youngster. I got bought that Hot Rocks yeah, really best good. of thing. Um, yeah. So speaking of long, long band longevity, so I heard on the radio this morning, um, today is the anniversary of uh, 20 years since the release of Amy Winehouse's so, uh, debut album, Frank. Okay. Which is a brilliant record. If the people out there, if you've never listened to it, it's brilliant. Um, uh, that was 20 years ago. So Amy Winehouse has been yeah. in our life for 20 years. Wow. Um, uh, but it's, today also marks the 40th anniversary of another debut album, which was Boy by U2, uh, which, yeah, 40 years ago. Um, U2 never really, I've never really been a fan, to be honest. Um, we never even talked about that. <coughs> so, excuse me, that Sphere thing in, L in uh, Vegas. We haven't even talked about that. We need to revisit that no. at some point. Um, but um, I must admit, I haven't. I haven't even. I knew it was odd. I saw some images, but I haven't. Yeah, really it's extraordinary, it. but a bit weird for an artist to be performing there because no one's going to be looking mm. at you. <laughs> We're going to be staring around the place. Um, yeah. So that got me thinking. Uh, and again, I think I heard something about this a little while ago. Someone talking about this. So you two first got together in the late seventies, seventy seven, seventy eight, something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, which is 45, 45 years ago, something like that. All the original members and they've never split up. Yes. Can you Ooh. think what could oh. be, I don't know the answer, this isn't a quiz question, but what could be the longest running band that still have all the original members that have never broken up and gotten back together? That, they must be one of them. They must be up there. Someone must be there. It's someone yeah, in the seventies, yeah. um, but but, but they mm. never split up. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't know, folks. Could if you be. can think of one, let me know. I mean, they, they were by far cooler in when they began. That they got a lot of fair reputation in that some stage. Mm. I mean, I think, for example, um, Acton Baby is. Um, bloody marvellous record and well, some great remixes that came out of that uh, uh but uh, they, you know they get a lot of um bono flack they do right, he rightly so he just needs to keep his gob shut doesn't he sometimes he but, up, but no he, he, he means well and i think he's he's a he's, he's an all right sort of bloke i think he's okay um yeah For a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah um <laughs> it's that joke, isn't it? Every time I snap my fingers, a child in Africa got, Africa dies. Yes. <laughs> Stop yeah, snapping stopped. your fingers. Then. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, when I first got my first ever CD player, I went down Dixon's. I got a CD player. And I, Shit, I need some CDs. So I went next door to our price. Didn't really want anything at the time. There was U2, Rattle and Hum. Um, so I can 
perfectly date when I got my first CD player. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and that was the one and only YouTube. Well, I think I did buy Actung Baby after that, but that's the only YouTube record I've ever bought. But um, yeah, I really loved Rattle and Hum. I think I went out and bought the accompanying VHS as well, because it was a film yeah. as well, wasn't it? Well, yeah. It was a soundtrack to the film. So, um, soundtracky affair. Yeah. yeah cool. cool. So uh, yeah, go and listen to um, Amy Winehouse. And I might go and listen to you too, because why not? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, but yeah, you can go and see him at the, uh, the sphere in Vegas. I think it's a thousand pounds, the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why not? A thousand pounds. Yeah. Just like that. A thousand pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy no. world. Uh, and that's my list all done. I reckon what we did miss last episode, you, you, you mentioned we're on 48. So we're nearly at the half century. Um, mm. our last episode fell just about on our two year, anniversary of the start of the podcast uh, which i uh, which passed me by so yeah, we've been two going two years. two years now flipping heck yeah you think we'd have a few listeners by now wouldn't you but yes but we'll no keep going no we got yeah. we have but i think it's a, a feeling it's the same people every episode because that's right <laughs> the uh the listener Thank figures you. are pretty flat as in they don't go up very much but they don't go down very much either so we've got some loyal listeners no. i know that yeah, um cool. so and viewers now so thanks for that folks and go tell your friends yeah sound uh, yeah so i reckon i'm done so i'm gonna say i've caught up done as well really i was yeah. following on from uh the first cd you ever bought um mm. at the moment on my socials i might and i might bring it in here just to mention the thing is that i thought i would um i've got my classical music collection off mm. the shelf it's in a sort of one of those foldery affairs mm. and it's quite large i don't play them the mm. cds i don't get them out but what I thought I would do is do a, a classical CD a week mm. just to get back into it and see what I've got. So mm. if um, if anyone wants to join me on the odd socials, I'm going to do that. And I might even mention the odd one or two of them here if I think there's a notable thing to be said Nice about said classical music. Because, Beautiful. Um, We've never really covered wanna, classical, have we? No, we never I do. No, I don't mind a bit of that. I might want to just listen to the odd one or two recommendations so yeah i'm gonna sort of think about that yeah good idea cool. brahms and list uh not at the moment but no. I'll be <laughs> it's, it's only lunchtime <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right on that note um say goodbye captain Goodbye, right, goodbye captain see you later folks see you next time see you